I have a couple of questions as you were talking. Yeah. So one is you said, uh, this is a bit detailed, but one is you said mitochondrial fragmentation. So what does mitochondrial fragmentation mean? I'm unfamiliar mm -hmm. with that. Yeah, sure. So mitochondria are actually... Um, they're um, they're generating those networks, right? So there is so if you stay in mitochondria in the cell with with some sort of an immunofluorescent reagent, you would see those beautiful network formations. And depending on uh, the function and what mitochondria need to do, basically this network will either be um, uh, fragmented or you'll see some fused mitochondria that are not just one organelle, but there are multiple mitochondria uniting. And uh, it basically has to do with what are the, uh, um, what is the current functionality um, and what is the current scope of work for those mitochondria, because they, um, they have to do with so many functions in the cell. And what we evaluated is um, a factor that is called TOM20 on the mitochondria. And you can basically visualize with fluorescent microscopy how mitochondria are um, basically configurating their mitochondrial network at any given time. So it looks like there is some sort of correlation when it comes to cell death, increased DNA damage, and actually fragmented mitochondria. So this was uh, this was the evaluation there. Right. So yeah, maybe it was just my misunderstanding. I thought mitochondria kind of worked on their own, but uh, not not in these networks. Uh, I was yeah. kind of I was interested to see that tryptophan seemed to be able to rescue the NAD levels. Because I thought the de novo pathway was mostly used in the liver and that other cells mm -hmm. always use the salvage pathway. But, but you saw significant NAD generated de novo. Yeah, absolutely. So this is very interesting. It's a very interesting point. And I think that um, it's noteworthy to basically emphasize here that this is a study of cells on a dish in the lab. So this is not a whole organism study, right? And mm. I was actually wondering this myself, whether the results would be different if we would be looking at whole organism mode of action when it comes to tryptophan supplementation. Um, and also interestingly, so the de novo synthesis pathway with tryptophan um, has multiple steps, right? So there are multiple kinases sitting there and enzymes and enzymatic reactions that tryptophan actually should go through in order to produce NRD, it's like seven or eight steps. However, with the de novo uh, synthesis pathway, it's only like two, three steps through NAMPT, as you may know, and um, and NMN is basically, so, so you have the nicotinamide, right? So this mm -hmm. is the pathway can start with nicotinamide supplementation, and then you, you need to utilize NAMPT, which is an enzyme that would convert, that would break down the nicotinamide um, and then produce um, NAD a couple of steps later. However, um, NMN is or NR are basically acting um, downstream of NAMPT. So we do have a dissection experiment in the paper as well, showing that, for example, if you feed nicotinamide, it can also rescue the phenotype, the cytotoxicity and the cell death. But if you block NAMPT, it doesn't rescue anymore if you're right. feeding the nicotinamide into the system. But if you block the NAMPT, but with a, a chemical agent, so for example, we used uh, an agent that is called FK866, and it does block the function of, of the NAMPT enzyme. However, if you still are feeding NR and NMN into the system, it will still rescue because they function and they are being fed into the system, you know, uh, irregardless of the NAMPT function. And I think this also proves, um, you know, how NAD boosters like this can be beneficial. But back to your question with regards to tryptophan, I, I think that in a, in a whole organism model, we might be having different results and we might be having different concentrations that would be required in order to see some sort of rescue because of those multiple steps that tryptophan has to go through. 
basically. And you're absolutely correct. In different tissues, it would be utilized in a different way as well. So this is also something to keep in mind, right? So with every um, scientific project, there will always be like some co pros and cons, right? So we're try we try to establish a cellular model that would be physiologically relevant with regards to you know, how the metabolism functions and whatnot, because as I previously said, if you would have a cancerous cell, the metabolism would be completely skewed, right? The metabolism would be completely different. So you wouldn't be having those, uh, this degree of like high resolution into the physiologically relevant metabolism that we had here with those stem cell derived neurons. Uh, but on the other side, um, I think this would be very, very interesting to see in a whole organism model, how, uh, how does tryptophan compare, uh, for example, to NMN and NR, right? And right. Um, my guess would be that the findings could be different here. Right. So speaking of NMN and NR, uh, I, I mean, if, if you can, can you comment yeah. which, which was more effective, um, at least in the Petri dish? Yeah, absolutely. So in every single experiment that we run, NMN actually outperformed NR um, mm. in, in all of the cytotoxicity rescue assays, uh, because we run um, many of them in order to verify um, our findings, right? So it, it wasn't just one experiment. So we did colorimetric assays, we did, we did cell death assays, um, many, many experiments. And uh, as you can see, uh, in every single one of them, NMN would, would definitely be more beneficial. And I think that uh, it has to do with the fact that um, NMN is basically a phosphorylated NR mo molecule, right? So NR, uh, when we consume it, it needs to go through one extra step and convert itself into NMN, and then it would boost the NAD. But if you take NMN directly, it's only a one-step precursor. So our data are in alignment with what we uh, were thinking of would be the results as well here. Interesting. So the NMN is getting through the neuron cell boundary intact, it would seem. Yeah. yeah, because we already have a paper showing that there is an NMN transporter, right? So interestingly, right. a few years ago, um, so what the hypothesis was that you actually like NMN cannot enter the cell and therefore, you know, an NR, NR molecule, for example, would be more efficient to take as oral supplementation, but we can now see that this is not the case. And as I said, the NMN mouse studies are showing that NMN is blood brain barrier permeable, and it does ameliorate those uh, dementia phenotypes in mice as well. Interesting. So one thing you said that if you kind of inhibit the parts and the sirtuins, then that rescues in some way the mm -hmm. NAD. But I assume that that then means that all your DNA is, your, the damage is not being fixed. So that's not a solution. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this this, this was just for experimentation's right. sake. So, uh, and I would assume that th this is a short-term fix basically, but we demonstrated the model nicely, right? <laughs> right, yes, yeah, no, I understand. Just yeah. wanted to kind of clear that, yeah. Uh, so, so one last kind of thought on this. So you, you put the NAD, uh, you put the NMN in and that, rescues the NAD mm -hmm. is it and I know that in your case because you had you genetically turned off all autophagy so it's not rescuable so if you did it in vivo do you have any thoughts on whether that would mm -hmm. help the autophagy or are you still going to get build up of proteins because you haven't got your autophagy working Mm -hmm. um, so there are different in vivo models uh, of autophagy deficient as well. There are some that are also trying to knock out ATG5 or other autophagy genes. And interestingly, with some of those genes, the damage to the whole organism is so much that um, it's not viable anymore. So mm -hmm. the, uh, the mice don't survive for a long period of time, and therefore you actually cannot study them because autophagy is such an essential mechanism uh, in our bodies, right? And, um, you know, uh, the longevity community is talking about the hallmarks of aging that keep on being mm -hmm. refined and whatnot. And, and you know, new indications are added to the circle of, of different hallmarks of aging. And in the recent, most recent revision a few months ago, autophagy was added as its mm -hmm. own kind of 
um, uh, separated from from just proteostasis, which is the balance of proteins, as a hallmark of aging. So, in vivo, so so what's going on here is that the question is not whether the autophagy by itself is being rescued, but whether the phenotype and the dysfunction in the cell is being rescued. Because actually, I think what's um, worth noting here is that even if autophagy is dysfunctional, just like it was in our cells, if we can still uh, make the cell more viable and make the cell cope with whatever stress is going on from reactive oxygen species and DNA damage and whatnot, this is a win, right? So this yeah. is uh, this is something that can potentially um, either help in neurodegenerative diseases um, and increase the amount of time where the cell can actually be healthy, even uh, in an organism, basically. So, so, so that's right. the that's the thing there, right? The outcome. Right. Yes. Okay. So one last question on this. So NMN has been shown to be able to get through the blood brain barrier. Uh, would there be anything that you could do? Because it, you know, you you eat it, right? And it's orally, so it's it's available everywhere. So would there be anything that would kind of encourage it to go through the blood brain barrier specifically? Um, so so what happens is that um with this transporter that we have discovered uh, a few years ago, um there is actually in, in that paper there is data on uh mRNA expression of this transporter in different tissues, right? Mm -hmm. So when we take it orally, um there is actually increased absorption in the guts because we've seen that the expression of this transporter is actually very high in the digestive mm -hmm. system. And therefore, I think that. Um, you know, NMN oral supplementation um, is as good as it gets because there are different companies that are trying to uh, to say that there are different formats basically uh, of NMN. So you have the liposomal NMN and I've been approached by a company that told me that they would like to create a product for us with like a, a dermal patch with NMN. And I actually said, well, if you look at the data, the transporter is not expressed in the skin at all. So it actually wouldn't work, right? So, which was uh, pretty funny. And um, yeah, as I said, I mean, I think there are a lot of companies that just want to um, to kind of make profits out of this hype uh, of NAD boosters. So there are different things around. But um, when it comes to specifically going into the brain, I think that um, here we kind of need to to see what is our overall strategy when it comes to brain health and brain boosting, right? So we do take the element that supports the overall organismal function, but then there are some other compounds that would be um, more uh, specifically targeting the uh, the brain cellular function. So this is not NMN, so the NMN will be, uh, so you take it orally and then it's being distributed at different kind of tissues where it's needed the most. Okay, got it. Okay, so yeah, I had that. Would, those are my questions. Um, paper's very interesting. We will link to it. Uh, and so you're yeah. you're kind of work doing a follow on some follow on mm -hmm. studies to that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there is a follow-on study on that. And actually, um, our collaborators lab at the University of Newcastle in the lab of Dr. Victor Korolchuk. So we published another paper with them before the cell reports paper in developmental cell, where we uh, where they basically are showing the same kind of conclusions, but in different species. So they are studying yeast, um, flies, and patient-derived uh, cells as well with neurodegeneration. So this was very interesting to see that as a proof of principle, this study is going into the right direction. And this uh, and the functions that we're studying here, the autophagy defects and the phenotype, and then the, the NAD utilization in the cell are kind of evolutionary conserved. So it's a very important mechanism that we're seeing yeast, fly, uh, patient cells, and so on. And with that, we are actually working on more data on this with NMN in particular, but with other NAD boosting compounds as well. And um, we definitely will be studying more stem cell derived um, tissues. 
that could be either from human embryonic uh, stem cells or from patient derived uh, cells as well, because that's the beauty of stem cell models, right? So you can take skin fibroblasts from a patient that has a particular genetic mutation and then grow those into induced pluripotent stem cells. And then those cells, you just differentiate into neurons again, let's say, or liver cells. And then you can study the biology at a very uh, precise manner, right? So uh, stem cells obviously have different kind of utilization when it comes to regenerative me medicine, precision medicine, but also like for drug discovery, I think this is this is a wonderful model to to keep on utilizing and we definitely will be publishing more on this subject. Mm -hmm.